My name is Juliana Chan, and I am a L'Oreal for Women in Science National Fellow, and I am also a scientist turned science communicator. I can think of no better way to set the context for my talk today than to show you a picture of one of the most distinguished scientists who have ever lived. She really needs no introduction. You know her. This is Marie Curie, the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, and also the first person, and still the only woman to have won the Nobel Prize twice. Today, I bet you a dollar that if you tried to ask anyone on the street to name you a woman scientist, they will immediately say, "Oh, that's easy, Marie Curie." There's only one problem with that. This amazing scientist lived, worked, and died. More than a hundred years ago, that's a century ago. It's very much harder to name a living scientist. Even though scientists think of themselves as intellectuals, you know, we come up with hypotheses, we are academics, we don't necessarily think of ourselves as public intellectuals. So even though you know we have a public-facing role, we do some outreach, we don't necessarily think of it as part of our job description. Perhaps. Um, aside from teaching or speaking at industry conferences, and that gap, the gap between scientists and the general public, is the gap that I am trying to bridge. Now, how many of you know these two people? They just happen to be living Nobel laureates from Asia. On the left is Tu Youyou. She's The first Chinese woman to win a Nobel Prize for her discovery of artemisinin, and this is a treatment for malaria. Just this year, the World Health Organization declared that China is finally malaria-free for the first time. This is after a 70-year-long battle, seven decades of fighting with malaria. In the 1940s, there were up to 30 million cases of malaria a year, and today, zero. Thanks to the, in part, to the contributions of Yo Yo, and on the right is Shinya Yamanaka. He is also a Nobel laureate and a Japanese orthopedic surgeon. He discovered a very elegant way of turning skin cells, you know, any part we shed skin cells all the time, into cells with stem cell-like properties, and he called it induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSC. And thanks to his invention. It is now possible to reduce or avoid using human embryos and animals for medical and cosmetic testing. Thanks to the contribution of Shinya, scientific research is now a lot more humane. So these two scientists from Asia represent the pinnacle of science, and there are more of them. In early 2010, while studying in the U.S., I was studying at MIT for my PhD and my postdoc. I noticed that the top science magazines that I love to read tended to focus on scientists from the Western Hemisphere. I mean, you would see Asian faces, of course. There are Asians working everywhere, but not from the continent of Asia. And, and that's really my origin story. This is a primary reason why I began Asian Scientist magazine, first as a dot-com and then later as a print magazine once we received seed funding. Please don't get me wrong. You know, I think it would be unfair to expect a European or an American magazine to be the voice of scientists from Asia. If a magazine is called Scientific American, it wouldn't be unreasonable to expect to see American scientists in it, isn't it? There are also many other reasons why you don't see nearly enough from Asia. There are language barriers, there are cultural differences, and of course, Asia being a very Large, heterogeneous continent with many countries. Ah, there. These are some of the magazines that we've published over the years. A decade since I've started it, I've left my faculty position as an assistant professor in a medical school in Singapore, and I've now become a full-time publisher and CEO of a company I founded, Wild Type Media Group, which focuses on science communication. From Asia, and also helps companies trying to enter into Asia in the science and technology sector. You know, my mission has not changed in the decades since I began it. There are two of them. One is to make 
Asian scientists' household names, and two is to help Asian science go global. Among the many projects that I'm proud to have started at Asian Scientists magazine is the Asian Scientists 100. This is a list that was inspired by Time magazine's 100 most influential people list. Here you can see some of them. I've been compiling this list since 2016, and to date, because we have done it five times, we have 500 of Asia's movers and shakers, from academia to industry and leadership. When I began this list, I had very humble ideas for it. I had assumed and hoped that conference organizers might tap into the list to look for speakers for their conferences, or maybe um, universities in the West might look at my list for people to recruit. That was all. But what I did not expect was that the dailies across Asia, these are newspapers from India to Vietnam to the Philippines to Hong Kong, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, they started featuring the scientists that were on my list, and they said they were from my list, of course, and sometimes on the front page, some of them in languages that I can't even understand. I was very happy, but I was even more surprised when the Philippine Senate, one of the legislative chambers of the Philippines, decided to pass a Senate resolution honoring eight of the Filipino scientists that I had put on the list. And, and, and they said they had brought honor and glory to the country for their commitment in the fields of science and technology. Can you imagine that? I really want to go beyond the rhetoric today and tell you about three scientists that I really love from my Asian Scientist 100 list and that you really should know about. There you go. Let's take a look at Gay Jane Perez. So she's the first Filipino to be honored on the ASEAN US Science Prize for Women. This is in 2018. She pioneered the use of satellite data to improve agricultural crop yields. This is a new field known as precision farming. She also led the first team that put the first Philippine microsatellite into orbit. The satellite is called Diwata-1. And two years later, she put its successors, Maya-1 and Diwata-2, also into orbit. Next, I want to tell you about Kiran Mazumda Shaw. She is the founder and chairperson of Biocon, India's largest biotechnology firm. She also happens to be India's richest self-made woman, self-made being the key. In 1979, with just 500 US dollars, she founded the company with one product, an enzyme that makes beer less cloudy. And we know that's important, of course. Since then, in the four decades since, she has grown the company to be one of Asia's largest biotechnology firms. She has made therapeutics and even innovative biologics, such as CAR-T therapeutics, this is an immuno immunotherapy, and bispecific antibodies. Next, and how about Chang Mi Man? I love her. She's chi a Chinese paleontologist, and she's investigating who we are and where we came from. She won the L'Oreal UNESCO Four Women in Science Award for her contributions to the fossil record and for showing us how we transitioned from aquatic vertebrates into life on land. It turns out that a lobed fin fish, an ancestral fish that lived 400 million years ago, is that evolutionary link between marine life and mammals on land. So, you have heard three stories, but there are many, many more. For each of the scientists that I've spoken about today, there are thousands, thousands who have achieved as much, if not more. If we can hear these diverse stories alongside that of Marie Curie, we can weave a much stronger global scientific fabric, and we will see all sorts of people, women, ethnic minorities, people with disabilities, underrepresented group, people of color, all consider themselves eligible, eligible being the key for a career in science and technology. And my job, I think I've got a great job, my job is simply to tell you their stories. The stories of Yo-Yo, of Shinya, 
the stories of Gay, Miman, and Kiran. Honestly, I think my work has just begun. So I invite all of you in the audience and all of you watching my video to join me on my mission of making Asian scientists household names. Thank you for your support.